What's up guys, today I'm going to show you the construction process for this brand new 1200 square feet ADU with solar panels. Before I begin the tour, I want to thank the homeowners for giving me access to film their beautiful ADU. The cost for this ADU was $245,000 for a 1200 square feet ADU. That did not include the plants or the solar panels. The very first thing anybody has to do when building an ADU is to get your plants. You can't go anywhere, you can't get estimates without having a set of plants available. So talk to your designer, get your plans, pay for the CD fees, and begin construction. For new construction, you will need a survey. Survey is a must because it tells the contractor where to build the ADU. Another thing that may be required in some areas is grading. If you're on a hill or a slope, this project did require grading. This video is probably gonna be a little bit long because there's a lot of steps that I'm going to cover. And if there's a contractor watching this video who has been doing construction for 100 years and tells me that I'm wrong, that's not how you build an ADU, most likely that person is right. And I would advise for that person to make a video so he can show everybody how to build an ADU. But most likely they won't because it's a conflict of interest. I'm a realtor, I do ADU videos for fun, and this just became a hobby that I really enjoy. Once you have the grading and the survey out of the way, the very next thing is to start on the rough plumbing, and that will require an inspection. You call the inspector, he looks at the rough plumbing, he approves it, and then the city inspector will give the project the okay to install the forms and the rebar. The forms are going to be for the footings of the property. And before I move forward, the ADU that I'm covering is on a raised foundation. The process to do a slab is a little bit different. Besides the foundation, everything else is the same for a raised or a slab ADU. Once the forms and the rebar is installed, if the plants have structural engineering, the structural engineer needs to stop by the project, inspect the rebar, and then provide a certificate when you have that certificate, then you can book an inspection with the city inspector. Because if you don't have that certificate from the structural engineer, the city inspector won't approve the pouring of the concrete. Once the forms and the rebar is installed, along with the certificate from the structural engineer, schedule the inspection. The inspector is going to show up, he'll look at everything, and then he will approve the pouring of the concrete. When the city inspector approves the pouring of the concrete, the very next step will be to install the subfloor along with the insulation. Once that step is completed, once again, you call for the inspection because the city inspector will check for two things, the insulation and the nailing on the subfloor. Once you call the city inspector to look at those two things, and if everything is in good shape, he will sign the inspection card and will approve the installation of the walls. If you guys need somebody to help you draw the plans, for your ADU, get in contact with Natalie. She can help you draw the plans, submit them to the city, and get them approved. The best way to get in contact with Natalie is by going over to the website, fill in the inquiry, and that's it. Natalie will take care of the rest. And by doing that, you will be taking care of step one towards building your ADU. During the framing process, the walls are gonna go up, maybe some of the sheer walls, along with the roof sheathing. And that's once again when you have to stop because you have to call for an inspection. The city inspector will show up to the property, look at the nailing on the roof sheathing and will approve for you to continue on with the project. Every single step that you take when building a new house or a new ADU is going to require inspections and they take a lot of time. Here in the city of LA, if you book an inspection on Monday, most likely the city inspector will show up either Wednesday or Thursday. So in between those days, you lose a lot of time. When the city inspector approves the framing and the roof sheathing nailing, he's going to approve to continue with the rough plumbing, the installation of the rough electrical, and this property had fire sprinklers, so those are going up as well. The shear walls, the windows, some of the rough electrical, and some of the rough plumbing. After this, the insulation and the drywall is going to be installed. This stage of the project is called rough construction. You can see all the wires, you can see all the plumbing, and believe it or not, this is where even some contractors get stuck, especially owner-builders. It takes 
a team of a lot of people. We're talking framers, electricians, plumbers, the fire sprinkler company. All those guys are coming in together to build a house or an ADU. I'm not against contractors. I think they're a necessity for people who don't have time or don't know how to build an ADU. The only thing that I have a problem with is contractors who try to get rich out of one project, charging insane amounts of money for something like this. I mean, 245 for a 1200 square feet ADU is not a bad deal, but don't take my word for it. Go online, talk to contractors, get estimates and find out what the prices are. And if it's an insane price, those are the guys that I don't really like. I like contractors like Gilbert who are providing services, their guys are busy, the homeowner is happy, and the project just keeps moving along. Once the rough construction is out of the way, and once again we're talking about framing, plumbing, electrical, fire sprinklers, there is one more thing that homeowners must have before calling the city inspector for the final rough. If you have structural engineering, you need to call the structural engineer, he needs to stop by the property, inspect the shear walls, approve them, give you a certificate, and then you can call for your final. Because if you call for the final without that certificate, you're going to be wasting time. And like I said before, in the city of LA, inspections are three or four days away, so you could be wasting a week waiting for an inspection. But if you're watching this video, just be ready with the certificate from the structural engineer if you have structural engineering in your plans. And remember, the visit by the structural engineer, it's a third party visit and he's not going to go to your property for free. They do charge a fee every time they stop by the property. I'm going to take a step back because there's one more thing that you have to do before you call the city inspector for your final. You have the certificate from the structural engineer and on top of that, in some cities, you may be required to hire an independent inspector to inspect the shear walls as well. And that inspector is also going to charge a fee. So you have a fee from the structural engineer and you have a fee from the private inspector to look at the shear walls. That's done in the city of LA. Once the city inspector signs off on all the rough, he's going to approve the installation of the installation. And that's where sometimes it gets sticky because some cities may or may not require a QII, a quality insulation inspection. The contractor knows exactly what to do, but if you're an owner builder doing this by yourself, you're going to get lost. So just look at your plans or ask your city inspector. He'll let you know if you need one or not. But once you have the insulation installed, you're gonna call the third party company to look at the insulation. That's another fee, by the way. They're gonna give you a certificate. You get that certificate, you book your inspection with the city inspector, you give him the certificate and he'll approve the installation of the drywall. Another thing that may be required before your final is the installation of the hot mop if you have a walk-in shower. If you have a tub, it doesn't really matter, but if you have a walk-in shower, the hot mop must be installed and there is a hot mop inspection. Whoever does the work has to fill it up with water. The water has to stay there until the city inspector shows up and he'll make sure that it drains properly. The progress of the ADU has moved along the rough electrical is in and at this stage they're installing the insulation. When I build my ADU, I install the insulation myself. It's about 9.30 and so far they have installed about, I don't know, 60 to 70% of the insulation. What's the reason why you're using R21 on the 2x6? Actually, uh, R21 is a higher density material. We could go ahead and use a R19, which is uh, required by the Title 24, but we decided to use R21, which is higher density. You're gonna get the best out of that one. The R21, was that called out in the plants? Actually, it wasn't. It wasn't called out by us. Wow, so if it's something that you guys catch that is not on the plants, but you can improve, you guys call it out and install it. Correct, that's how we follow up with our customers. Man, that's good service. And for the, for the ceiling, this is a vaulted ceiling. What kind of insulation did you guys use? It's actually an R30, but it's uh, actually a cathedral, which is a little bit denser, so we could have uh, some airflow through the, uh, through the uh, studs and everything. That's in the Title 24 as well. And is that a specific insulation for vaulted ceilings? Yes, correct. What about the insulation on the walls? What type of insulation did you guys use? Uh, on the 2x4 studs, we used the R15s which is a higher density material as well. I'm on the side of the ADU, and this is where the utility lines are going to be installed. We have the meter, we have the shutoff valve for the water, and we also have the washer and dryer. Once the city inspector signs off on the installation, 
he will give the okay to install the asphalt saturated paper along with the lath and the drywall on the inside of the house. These two things could be done at the same time and they can be inspected at the same time. The stucco guys can work on the exterior and the drywall team can work on the inside of the property. When the city inspector looks at the lath, he wants to be sure that asphalt saturated paper was installed and the lath was installed properly. On the inside for the drywall, the city inspector is going to be looking at the screws to make sure that they are drywall screws and not shiny ones. Also, they're gonna look at the distance in between each screw. They're not gonna measure, they're going to eyeball it. But in general, they have to be about six inches apart and you can't have four or five screws in one section. If everything is done properly, the city inspector is going to sign off on the drywall and the lath and on the exterior, the first coat of stucco can go up, which is called the scratch. Right behind this wall is the property line and the neighbor's house. And for that specific reason, the drywall that they have to use on this section has to be 5 8 fire rated drywall. And all that information is located inside the plants. So it's very important for the contractor to read the plants and install the correct type of drywall on every section of the ADU. This is the mold resistant drywall. They're going to install it anywhere where water pipes are coming out, which is gonna be under the kitchen sink and under the bathroom vanities. Believe it or not, after you have the drywall installed, there's probably one more inspection to look at the stucco on the exterior, but that's it. There isn't any major inspections from this point all the way to the final inspection. The city inspectors don't care about the flooring, they don't care about the bathroom finishes, the kitchen. They're only looking for the structural, not the finishes. After this major step, you have to be ready for your final inspection. I missed a few critical steps in the construction process of the ADU, but so far, the stucco, the drywall has been completed, the laminated floors, the tile in the bathroom, and currently, they're installing the kitchen. So let me give you a tour of what the ADU looks like right now. After the kitchen is installed, they're going to come in with the electrician and cover up all the electrical outlets. They're going to install the LED lights. For this property, the solar panels also had to pass an inspection. Everything was done properly, up to code. The inspector approved the work and they kept on moving with the project. For this project, there was one major delay. The city was not working fast enough to install the meter so they could turn on the power. That took a very long time and expect that to happen when you're building a brand new ADU. There's gonna be delays that you would not expect to be there, but things are not gonna move the way you want to. Once all the finishes are installed in the property, you have your kitchen, your floor, your bathrooms, everything is working, the mini split turns on, you have the meter installed. That's when you have to call a Hearst test company. And this is a private company that comes over to the property and they do an audit for energy efficiency. They're going to look at the mini split or your AC system, the insulation that you use, the windows. They're gonna come in with some instruments and test the fan on the bathroom or the hood range fan. They're gonna do a lot of stuff and they're gonna take all that information, upload it to Title 24, and then they're gonna give you a certificate or they'll give that certificate to your contractor. To be fully ready to pass the final inspection, the numbers on the ADU must be installed, the smoke detectors must be in every room, and you need the certificate from the Title 24 company. You call the city inspector, he looks at all those things, and finally, he will sign off on the final, and then you can wait for your certificate of occupancy. Those are all the major inspections that you will have to go through in order to build a brand new ADU. There's probably gonna be a few things that I didn't mention. I didn't want the video to be super long. After about seven months, the ADU is finally ready. Let me show you the outside, the water line, the water heater, the mini splits, and the solar panels. It's time for the big reveal. Let's step inside and see what this ADU looks like.
the homeowners have a tradition of having sugar, rice, some money over here, and then water on the fridge. This is a tradition they've been doing every time they take on a project. I think I'm going to use that tradition from now on. Hopefully I can build another ADU. This is the closet for bedroom number one. And this is the niche that I was wondering whether it was gonna be a window or a niche. It turned out to be it's a niche. There's a small bench. We have a big vanity right over on this side. And these are the mirrors that come with integrated LED lights. Let's go out through the door that gives you access to the kitchen and make our way to room number two. It has its own bathroom, its own walk-in closet, two windows, a fan right above us. We have the mini split on the corner. This bathroom has a tub. On the other side, we have a big, massive vanity, lots of drawers for storage. The construction alone was $245,000, and that's not including the solar panels, the design, the structural engineering, or the permits. The homeowner also had some additional work done to her property and overall, including everything, was $290,000 to build this ADU with additional work. I think that's a really good deal. You don't have to take my word for it. Just go online, look for a contractor, ask them to build a 1200 square feet ADU and see what they come up with. But I'm doing this video so people would know what to kind of pay for their ADUs. If you guys wanna see a 3D tour along with pictures of the construction process, click on the link below and check that out. It took me between six to seven months to shoot this ADU. And if there's one thing that you guys can do for me is like the video and subscribe, that's it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you on the next one.